Laurent Duvernay Tardif of the Kansas City Chiefs, the first player and the only player so far to opt out of the 2020 season. He is a doctor. He explained Friday night on social media, being at the front line during this offseason has given me a different perspective on this pandemic and the stress it puts on individuals and our healthcare system. I cannot allow myself to potentially transmit the virus in our communities simply to play the sport that I love. If I am to take risks, I will do it caring for patients. That's a strong statement, and I think that statement been, may have been lost on some of the teammates and coaches that praised him. What he's basically saying is none of us should be doing this. None of us should be potentially transmitting the virus in our communities just to play football. Now, he's not preaching but that's the inescapable conclusion. Kind of. He doesn't believe it's justified this year, Chris. We'll see whether or not others agree with him, whether it's for that more humanitarian reason, like uh, Lauren du DuVernay-Tardif has utilized, or whether it's, I'm worried about myself, I'm worried about family members, uh, I'm just not comfortable this year, whatever the case may be. They have another week to tap out if they're going to tap out. If you do it, it's irrevocable. And if you let August 3 pass without doing it, you are locked in. You cannot walk away. There is one limited exception. You can have a change circumstances where if someone close to you gets sick or dies over it, then you can say, okay, hey, hey hang on, I'm yeah, out. Right. But for the most part, if you are still there a week from now, you're there all season long. And if you leave, you're breaching your contract. Well, you know, again, this is a, this is a different guy. You know, this is, this is uh, first off, he's a doctor. Yeah, he's extremely smart. We know that. He's been on the front line here, so he's really had a lot of experiences dealing with the, you know, COVID-19 pandemic or COVID-19 pandemic, what it's doing to our country. So he's seeing the worst of this. And, you know, again, uh, I'll say this too. Hey, listen, he has the luxury of saying I'm a doctor. He and I can do that going on, you know, further in life. A lot of guys in football don't have that luxury. Uh, no, football is it. That's what they're best at. And they're going to have to try to make that work and go from there. But, you know, uh, this is a tough blow for a team that we know is uh, the Super Bowl contender. But they made an appropriate signing this uh, this weekend, too, to make up for, you know, uh, the, the the missed right guard here. And I, Duvernay Tardif, I, I guess choke when I say his name. Um, so they, they at least have made some action there to fill in that with Kalachi Osemele. And we'll see if that works. I still think he's got some good years in, in front of him as well. I mean, there was a time when Osemele was the marquee yes. offensive lineman in free agency. When he jumped from the Ravens to the Raiders, it kind of fell apart for him latter years in Oakland, and then with the Jets, it didn't work out. I don't know that this is apples to apples, but at least it shows the Chiefs have a plan and they're going to do what they have to do to replace Duvernay Tardif. And uh, and you got to be ready. And this is why when we brought up the question last week of the Chiefs or the field for Super Bowl 55, you got to go with the field because you never know how this virus is going to affect a given team. Now, we didn't anticipate that a starting offensive lineman would immediately opt out for 2020, but we never know what's going to occur, who's going to test positive, when a key player is going to be absent for a key game. It's just part of the uncertainty for this year. For the opt-outs, and again, I, I've been trying to get a feel for how many guys are going yeah, to opt Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What do, think think? Only gonna... what do you think your gut I, tells you? I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be a much, a handful throughout the whole league is what my gut is telling me. Single digits is what people keep telling me, right. but here's the thing. You don't have to make a decision now. Now, it's clear that DuVernay Tardif knew that this is what he was going to do no matter what, and he was waiting for the deal to be finalized. He'd already made his decision, and he announced it right away. Everybody else has another week. There's no reason to announce it. There may be guys who know they're going to do it, but why not take the full week and, and think about it? Maybe you wake up one day and change your mind. Once you tell the team you're out, you are out, period, even if you tell them you're out before the deadline. So there could be some guys who are thinking about it. There could be some guys who are contemplating it. And there's no reason, if they haven't made a final decision, to tell anyone about it today. You know, flip it around, how many guys have said definitively they're not opting out? Now, that doesn't mean that everyone is thinking about it, but there's right. no reason. There's no reason to say it now unless you are 100% certain that it's what you're going to do. A couple of things to keep in mind, too. There is a stipend that's available for the players who opt out. If you will fall into the high-risk category, you get 350000 If you don't fall into the high-risk category, you get 150000 It's not free money. It's an advance on salary to be earned next year. So when you do come back, for example, 
Duvernay Tardif will get 150000 His salary this year was supposed to be $2.75 million. He'll make $2.6 million in 2021. His contract tolls a full year. He gets 150000 now. He gives up 150000 later. And if, and, you know, at one point a GM said to me, well, if I'm an undrafted free agent and I know I've got no chance of making the team, I just opt out and I get $150,000. The problem is if you don't make the team next year, you owe $150,000, which means you're going to have a team potentially chasing you around as a former employee to pay back that $150,000. Is that so just the undrafted not, free agents? Like, it, no, it, it's anybody. No, you've got to make du- the team Even next Duvernay year. Tardy, if, if he got his $150,000, he goes in there next year and they somehow cut him from the team, wow, he'd have to pay back $150,000. Now, it's quite possible the Chiefs would say we're going to waive that, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But but that's the way it works. Okay. I, I think they didn't want they didn't want that category of guys yeah. to think you know what I, I'm probably done anyway, and I'll just take the free. I, this is basically my gold watch on the way out the door. You know, I wasn't really. And I was probably this is going to be my last year, and I really am not into it. And I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'm good. I'll opt out. I'll take the money, right. And then see you later. So I think they don't want it to be abused. They want it to truly be there as money that helps guys get through this year, with the understanding that they will be back next year. But it it, it does give it gives the team a little a little uh, weapon for 2021 if there are some guys that are on the fence that that did opt out. Uh, if they get cut. They have to pay that money back. But I, I agree with you. We're not going to be talking, I believe, about a lot of guys yeah. who do it. At the end of the day, guys want to play football. And there's too much money on the line. And that is where I think it's going to go. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, And thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.